Welcome back to D20 Tactics. On this channel, I play Dungeons and Dragons with my friends and we explore combat scenarios and play all the tactics used to defeat monsters quickly and safely, giving you more time to get back to roleplaying. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Sar Sincero, and today I'm joined by Azure Wolf, Blind Oracle, Train Rex, and Longfish. Together we'll run through typical battles that adventurers might see playing Dungeons and Dragons. Whether you're a new player trying to gain experience and level up your game, a seasoned fighter looking to learn some new tricks and maintain your edge, or a dungeon master who wants to get the most challenge out of your monsters, join us as we slice and dice our way through monsters and mayhem and evaluate the tactics that decide who makes it onto the boss fight and who's going to be reaching for a fresh character sheet. In this series, the players are controlling characters straight out of the starter set. Hi, I'm Blind Oracle, and I'm playing a level 13 halfling rogue. I am Longfish, I am playing the level 13 Dwarven Cleric. I am Azure Wolf, and I'm playing the Elf Wizard at level 13. I am Train Rex, I am playing a Human Fighter at level 13. At level 13, our daring adventurers are climbing the mountain domain of an ice dragon. They'll have to face six encounters all based on this theme before they get a long rest and level up to level 14. This is the 13th dungeon in the starter set series, so if you missed the start, you can find a link to it in the description below. Let's review what the players have at the start of the dungeon. I am a level 13 Life Clerk. Since level 12, I have picked up Divine Ward, which is my new spell. I am going to precast Hero's Feast at level 6. For today's Hero's Feast, we're getting 17, as well as 8 at level 4. The Rogue, the Fighter, and the Wizard. And the Warding Bond with the Rogue, level 2. I'm a level 13 Thief Rogue. The most important thing about this is I now have used Magic Device, so I am borrowing an instrument of the Bards in order to give myself some spell utility. I've also now got three Scrolls of Haste. The Folklucan Bandor allows me to cast seven spells a day. The highlights on this include fairy fire, fly, invisibility, levitate, and protection from evil and good. I've also got plus one arrows now that are going to help me shoot things better in combat. I'm playing the 13 level wizard. A couple of new things on the list is going to be simulacrum was picked up. I am pre-casting that. Ritual casting find familiar to get the owl. It's just a menagerie of pets today. Wand of the war mage got an upgrade. It's now a plus two. I picked up three scrolls of dispel magic also. Um, also casting mage armor with the scroll. I'm playing a level 13 fighter. I'm most interested in that plus two great axe. My getting three attacks per turn. Second wind is going to be probably vital because I tend to face check things. <laughs> All the encounters use monsters straight out of the monster manual with no modifications or adjustments. Encounters are based on challenge ratings from that book. I'll control the monsters and do my best to put as many adventurers into the ground as possible. As we go, we'll talk about the choices we made, why they fit the characters that the players are using, and what mistakes we made along the way. Grab your dice, draw your sword, and let's jump into combat. The adventurers are adventuring into the frozen tundra where a white dragon has been reported. They're gonna go up to the top of the mountain, slay the dragon, and then gain the treasure. Hit points, abilities, spells, items in hand, starting with Longfish. I'm Longfish. I'm currently at 137 hit points. I'm holding the Staff of Python and Shield plus one. I have four level one, two level two, three level three, two level four, two level five, and one level seven spell slot. I'm also holding both charges of my channel divinity. I'm Major Wolf. I'm holding in my hands currently the Wand of the War Mage plus two, Wand of Magic Missiles. I have my Arcane Recovery, four first level slots, three second level slots, three third level slots, three fourth level slots, two fifth level slots, and one sixth level slot remaining. My semi lacroom has all those spell slots available and he has half my HP, so he was at 40 HP. I am handing him the Wand of the War Mage plus one. So I have 139 out of 139 hit points. I'm holding a plus one short bow with plus one arrows in the quiver for said short bow. Sneak dice on tap all day. Uh, level 13 fighter is after that delicious feast at 166 hit points, holding that plus two great axe just in case has a javelin of lightning on their back. You're the first one to figure out you can have a great axe in one hand and a javelin in the other ready to go and then put one away when you're ready to swing. In this encounter, we have two monsters, which I do not know how to pronounce. So I'm going to say Remoraz. People also say Remraz or other things, but I'm going to say Remoraz. There's a young Remoraz and a middle-aged Remoraz. Remoraz has heated body, so any creature that touches it or strikes it with a melee attack takes 2d6 fire damage on the young one and 3d6 fire damage on the middle-aged one. They both have a bite, which will do some damage. The middle-aged one has a 10-foot reach on the bite, and it 
also does fire damage. If it bites a creature, that creature is grappled and the grappling is also restraining. The Middle Age Remoras can swallow creatures. They are immune to cold, they are immune to fire, they have dark vision and tremor sense, so the rogue will be detected if the rogue is on the ground, and they can also burrow 20 feet. I have a question about the Remoras. What is the range on their tremor sense? 60 feet. Okay, thank you. Pushing these Remoras through the tunnels, guiding them on to attack the targets, are a number of orcs. We have two elite orcs, known as Orogs. They have great axes and javelins, multi-attack and plate armor. And there is also a single regular orc. He's got great axes and javelins and hide armor. Terrain and effects. This encounter has a lot of impassable terrain as you guys are boxed in inside of this tunnel system. There's a single square of impassable terrain where these pillars come up, but you can run around behind them if you want. Then there's also a bunch of ice along the walls. This is dangerous terrain. It is a DC 17 acrobatics check to walk along that. If you try to walk along that and you fail the acrobatics check, you will fall prone and stop moving. So that's what you can move along. Is that even with the boots on that we've all forgot to mention we had? If you have boots of the winter land, you do not have to make that check. Tactics. What tactics do you think you're going to use in this fight? I think we go all airborne on this one. That makes sense to me. Most of my attacks are going to be up close unless I want to toss that javelin. Because there's nowhere to place a spanking tank with that move apart from the orcs, but yeah. Well, let's go ahead and roll some initiative then. This decides our fate. <laughs> Anybody have higher than a 20? 23 on the wizard. Golf clap. Anybody have between a 20 and a 15? 20 for the rogue. Anybody have between a 15 and a 10? Anybody have between a 10 and a 5? 9 for the fighter. Nine for Mr. Boo Gallington. I have a six for the Remoraz. Six for the Clerk. Each wolf, kick us off. So I'm going to touch Blind Oracle here and give them fly along with myself. I can fly myself at this point. Oh, you got your things, don't you? Mm-hmm. I was about to use the similar rack, I'm gonna get all four of us. Ah, okay, no, then do that. Blind Oracle and me are gonna go fly, going to move as high as I can. 25 feet. And give the command to the Simulacrum to do the same to, let's go fighter. And then the Simulacrum will cast fly on the fighter. And himself, we're outcasting us, so we're getting two people. That makes it a fourth level spell. What's the Simulacrum doing on its turn? Flying up. Sorry, Cleric, I'm leaving you on the ground because you're the most tanky. That's the Asia Wolf. <laughs> After that is the Blind Oracle. It does not look like there is anything to hide amongst the ceiling. We are also going to go 25 feet up. Let's go back and hide amongst the outcroppings up there. I have no idea what that's actually going to do to line of sight, but we'll figure it out. Can't see all of you. Okay, cool. What is their minimum perception? Passive perception is 10. Maximum is 20. My minimum roll on self at this point is uh, 25. So you're going to be auto passing those. Then take my standard action to shoot the Remoras. 24 to hit. Hits. 37 points of damage. After the blind oracle, we go to the train. I'm going to move west just to the other side of that icicle, because that's just under 30. You have 60 feet of movement while you fly, I believe. Correct. Let's face check that right up against that Remoraz and start using my tags. So that's a total 25 to hit. Hits. That's a total 14. When you hit the Remoraz, it's going to do damage to you. Take 14 points of fire damage. Second attack, nat 1. And it's not going to make it. Nope. And third attack. 21 total. Hits. 11. And take nine points of fire damage. After the train is the owl. Let's move in to the west there and aggravate for the fighter's next turn. Three back. Yep. Imagine the owl is also on the ceiling. After that is my turn. The orogs are going to advance. This orog is going to go here. It's going to use its action to help the Remrods get advantage against the fighter. As a bonus action, the orcs can move up to their speed towards a hostile creature it can see. It's going to move to there, use its bonus action now that it can see the cleric, and it's going to attack. 21 to hit you, cleric. Right on point. Go ahead and take minimum damage of four. This guy's going to run up to here. It's going to use its bonus action now that it can see you, and it's going to attack. Multi-attack, here's the first one. 25 to hit you. That will hit. 15 damage, slashing. Second attack, 12 to hit. That will not hit. This Remrods is going to burrow into the ground. It's going to burrow to there, and it's going to dash to do so. Over here, the Remrods is going to attack. 21 to hit you, fighter. That hits. Take 41 points of piercing damage. Wow. Take 5 points of fire damage. You are grappled meaning you have a speed of zero, and you also are restrained, meaning that you have 
advantage to be hit and you have disadvantage to hit other people. After that, we're going to go to the Longfish. Action dodge, bonus action, cast a level 2 spiritual weapon between the Orc and the Ramoran. That will hit the Orc, the multi-attack one. 17 to hit. Miss. They have plate armor of 18. Alright, that's it. After that, we're going to go to the Asia Wolf. Let's cast Shatter, sculpting around our lovely cleric there. Upcasting it to 4th level, 24. It's a con DC 18. Smaller orc will pass, taking 12. The larger orc will fail, taking 24. Giving the command for the simulacrum to follow up with the same. After that, we go to the simulacrum. Con DC 18, please. 29. Smaller orc is going to fail, and that's lethal. The larger orc is going to fail, and that is also lethal. We're going to move to the south as far as we can go. After that, we're going to go to the rogue, blind oracle. If we can still see the large remores from where we are in the outcropping, we are going to bonus action hide, and then pop out and shoot 20 to hit. 20 hits. 36 points of damage. Hang out there. I don't see any reason to move. Train, you are currently grappled, meaning your movement is zero, and you are restrained, meaning you have disadvantage on attack rolls. You can, if you wish, take an action to try to escape with either your athletics or acrobatics, and the DC is 17, or you can do things that you normally would do. You have the help action also. If you want to attack, you have advantage on the first attack roll against the target. Take my chances on rolling athletics to free myself. Sounds good. 19 total. 19 will do it. You spent your action to break free. What do you do next? Can I prepare an action for the next round? Probably not. I'm going to move back to the other side of that, that icicle. Okay. You're going to take the opportunity attacks as you walk away? Oh, right. Crap. No. Hang out? Yeah, hang out. After the train, we go to the owl. Same thing. Fly in, give advantage, but fly back a little bit more farther this time. After the owl, we go to the monsters. I don't see that we have to do anything different here. So the Orog is going to do the same thing. It's going to give advantage to the Remraz, and then it's going to move there. The Remraz is going to try to bite the fighter. 17 to hit. That's a miss. Okay. The Remraz is going to... Yeah, it's going to stay there. That's fine. The young Remraz is going to pop up out of the ground, move to where the cleric is, and attack the cleric. 17 to hit your cleric. Oh, that will miss. And then it's going to spend 10 feet of movement to go back into the ground. Does the Remraz popping back underground proc an attack of opportunity? No, because it hadn't left the five foot, and also you can't see it when it does. After that, we're going to the longfish. Diagonal northwest one space. Oh, that's ice. Never mind, just put me one space closer then. Action, sacred flame on the orc. DC... He gets a nat 20, so I think he's going to pass. Never mind. Bonus action, move the hammer diagonal southeast of me. After that, we go to the top of the order, Asia Wolf. I am burning three slots to fire at the big boy, staring at a three on the magic missile. Three plus one is four, four plus five is nine, nine times five is 45. The simulacrum. He's going to burn a level three. His magic missile does a four on the die. Four on the die, plus one is five, plus five is ten, five times ten is fifty, and the older Remraz dies. Anything else? It's going to be it for me. Blind Oracle. Let's remove the target we can see. Hide bonus action. Pop out action to attack the Orog. 24 to hit. 24 hits. For 41 points of damage. After the Blind Oracle, we go to the train. I'm going to take my attacks on that guy. First one is 28 total. Hits. 14 slashing. It dies. I'm going to move as close as I can. That was the train. After that is the owl. Dodge. All right. After the owl is the young Remraz. Young Remraz is going to pop up out of the ground, attack the fighter. Nat one, go back into the ground. After that is the longfish. Prep a sacred flame to hit young Remraz when it pops out again. Cool. And you're not concentrating on anything else. After that, we go to the top of the order, Asia Wolf. Prepping a magic missile level two to hit that thing when it pops up. Cool. Simulacrum. Same thing. Prep a magic missile level two. So you concentrate on level two magic missile and the rogue drops three feet to the ground. More than that, 25 feet to the ground. Apologies, yes. The rogue drops 25 feet to the ground and takes three points of falling damage. The wizard falls to the ground and takes 10 points of falling damage. Give me a concentration save for your new concentration effect. Oh, that's a big old 16. And you land prone, so rogue, you're currently prone. Simulacrum takes eight points of damage as it falls. 22. Maintains the effect. Blind Oracle. Prepare to shoot the Remoraz as it pops up. Bonus action hide first. After the Blind Oracle's the train. I'm going to prepare an action to attack the Remoraz. Sounds good. Owl. Dodging. Remoraz comes up, up out of the ground. Asia Wolf, fire off your shot. 
Staring at a three. Three plus one is four. Four plus five is nine. Nine times five is 45 points of damage. And then the simulacrum. Three on the die for him too. That's another 45 points of damage. Rogue. Prone. Disadvantage to attacks. Does it f impact ranged attacks? Nope. Disadvantage on attack rolls. This is now a nothing burger of an attack. It has a nothing burger of hit points, so it's going to be fine. 26 to hit. Hits. 10 damage. It has three hit points, so it's dead. Perfect time for that circumstance to occur. Port hit points. He's your wolf. 102. Simulacrum. 35. Blind Oracle. 139. Train. 97. Longfish. 118. Any end of encounter actions? Recover arrows, because these matter now. Let me just double check. I don't know that you can recover magic arrows. Don't know why you couldn't. I think they specifically say that you can't. Once it hits a target, the ammunition is no longer magical. So you could recover it for regular. Does not matter. If you missed with any of them, you could track those. Has everyone like lost at least 14 hit points? Yep. No. Only the fighters. I'm gonna do second wind. 1d10 plus 13. 18 healing. One encounter down, five more to go before the long rest. Thank you for stopping by, and I hope you'll join us next week as the adventure continues. I'm Sarson Zero, and I will see you next time.